Hi, welcome back. It's now a few weeks after the Cotswold Way and uh, I've been reflecting, internally analysing and uh, mentally accepting what happened and uh, I'll give you some of those thoughts. I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'll just give you what I think I've worked out happened. But before I do that, let's see what actually happened on the day. Let's go. Let's do this. Everyone has a plan A, and for me that's under 24 hours. Plan B would be to do it in under 28 hours, which is what I did it the first time around. And then plan C is finish. So, just need to keep eating, keep drinking, and keep moving. So, Welcome back. In this video I'll be processing and reflecting on my first DNF. Uh, we'll have a chat about my initial feelings both during and after the race, but also after some reflection and analysis. So stay tuned and let's see how this played out. Here we are, start of the Cotswold Way 2021 and uh, we're just waiting to get started at midday on Saturday. Um, 102 miles from Chipping Camden to Bath. So let's see how this one goes. Hi, here with Carl, just made a start on the Cotswold Way and uh, into our first climb. Love the channel. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even a mile in and uh, reduced to a walk, but it's a nice warm day and we'll take it easy, get it done. So best of luck. You too, thank you. Mate. All right. Coming into Broadway now, yeah, after nearly six miles, I'm trying to take it nice and easy. Beautiful Cotswold village. Uh, I think we've got a hill to come straight after this, but so far so good. You alright dudes? You alright? You're not going to jog it out with me? <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Uh, I've only done six miles, haven't I? <laughs> I've got a while to go. Keep going. Go, go, go. Have a good day.
just gone through 10 miles, 1 hour 40, and uh, going through another lovely village, Stanway. So far, so good. Managing to drink, managing to eat. That's always the way in the first 10 miles. Let's hope it's the same in the next 30. So far, so good. So now we're 19 miles in to the Cotswold Way Century. Luckily the sun has disappeared behind the clouds for a bit and uh, the heat is gone, so that's good. And uh, just trying to take it easy. So I thought I'd quickly talk to you about my goals for this race. So this will be my fourth 100 miler. And uh, this race was actually the first 100 miler I ever did in 2019. And it was a huge shock to the system then. Since then, I've done the Thames Path 100 and the South Downs Way 100. And now I'm back to do better than my original uh, on this race. So in my head, everyone has a plan A. And for me, that's under 24 hours. Um, plan B would be to do it in under 28 hours is what I did it first time round, and then plan C is finish. So, just need to keep eating, keep drinking, and keep moving. Let's see how we get on. There we go, just gone past 20 miles, 3 hours 28, and uh, after a nice climb up to Bella Snap, We've got a bit of a recovery downhill. I'd like to give a shout out to a couple of my subscribers who uh, came and said hello, one being Carl. Thank you, Carl, and Andy, a local Gloucestershire guy. So thanks for coming to say hello. Do your best, and I'm sure at some point you'll overtake me. Uh, give me that boost I need. Also, hello to Nigel, who's part of uh, Dursley Running Club, which I'm part of, and also Owen, uh, who I went to school with. Good luck, everyone. Here we are, top of Cleve Common, overlooking Cheltenham. Mile 30 done, 5 hours, 33 minutes, and uh, just on my way to Birdlip. Passed through Axe Hill Aid Station a few miles ago. Had a good drink, had some pineapple slices. Yeah, on my way. Cooling down, it's nice. Let's go. So, uh, Just coming up to mile 38 um, and Birdlip Aid Station. And uh, I think I'm gonna stop here. I'm uh, really not feeling it today. I'm feeling very strange, which I've not felt before. Uh, light headed, nauseous. Uh, and so something's just not right today, so I've made good time. I'm ahead of schedule. But, um, oh 
dear. Yeah. My heart's just not in it today. I know everyone has their bad days, but this is the first time I've had one and uh, it's a strange feeling. Um, I think this is going to be my first DNF. And I'll have to have a look at why that is and deal with it. But uh, yeah, for now I'll try and analyse it another day, but I apologise. Um, well, I don't know what, I don't know what I apologise for. Um, it's tough. So, for me today it's just not happening and uh, I wish all the best to everyone else competing. Hope they slog on through and get it done. And I'll regroup and uh, make a decision as to if I return to this one or not. Yeah. Thanks for your support. Sorry. So having watched that a few times back, um, everything started and went really well. Felt really good, I was ahead of pace, I was taking on food and fluids well. Uh, having looked back there's one moment where it all changed and that was around mile 32 just after the second aid station and uh, that's when I got sick for the first time. Um, just had a sip of my tailwind and and some sort of gag reflex and it all came back up and shortly after being sick I started feeling really lightheaded uh, very quite dizzy my vision was a bit weird and I've never experienced that before I think that threw me quite a bit so having made the decision I'd stop um, I thought it was probably best rather than slogging on for another 70 odd miles with no fluids or no nutrients going in. So initially I was disappointed, pretty upset. I was also confused, not experiencing that before. And uh, I suddenly for the first time ever just lost the wheel con to continue, the drive. I lost the drive to finish it. And reflecting on that, I really wanted to enjoy this race. Having done it before and with a few under my belt, I thought I'd be able to pace it right, fuel it well and just enjoy the whole experience. And that was what I initially thought was the case. But on reflection, there's a few other factors that play into that. So over the past few weeks, I've obviously given it a lot of thought. Uh, now obviously accept what happened happened and it's just one of those things that happens to everyone. Uh, and you can't let it get you down, you just got to get on with it. And if nothing else, it's made me a little bit more focused and motivated to look a bit more into my training. Um, I've never really followed an ultramarathon training plan, I've just done what I felt like when I feel like it. Uh, so I've started giving that a little bit more thought and maybe put together a little bit more structure looking uh, into the future next year. And obviously I need to be looking at uh, my nutrition strategy a lot more. But on the day, maybe it was, I had some false goals subconsciously. I wanted to do it in under 24 hours, I knew that. But I, I sort of set myself these other ones like just coming in under 28 hours and then just finishing it. But really, I must have really wanted to do it in under 24 hours. And having had that setback at 32 miles, I knew that it would have been a right struggle and slog to do that. So that probably played into it. Maybe I was a bit overconfident. Not sure. Some of my other thoughts um, since the run were um, I think for the first time with that subconscious 24 hours in my head I was actually racing, racing, not running, uh, which made a huge difference. Although I felt comfortable in my pacing, um, it was a lot quicker than normal. I was ahead of schedule uh, and although I felt good on the day maybe that played into it somewhere. 
Um, also, I in the lead up, I, I don't think my legs were completely 100%. I, I did have a niggle in my shin, um, although on the day it was no problem at all. Uh, and in the subsequent days since the race, I, I've got no problems. But in the back of my mind, it must have been something that played into it. But the main one for me is my nutrition. And if you've watched any of my previous race videos, you'll know that in the majority of them, I tend to get sick at some point and then just slog it out to the end having not eaten anything else and uh, I really need to work on that um, so I'm gonna try a few ideas maybe I just don't need to take on so much um, I did take on quite a lot in that first 30 miles and maybe that was also something that played into it I just need to experiment a bit more mainly in my training and see um, how that can affect how I feel in these longer races so I didn't want to go into too much detail. Everyone has their different experiences. That was mine. Um, you live and you learn and uh, hopefully I can take some of those experiences away and implement them into the next big race that I do. So for now, that is my experience of the Cotswold Way for the second time. Um, I think really, let's be honest, I, I will be back uh, and I will be giving it another go. Uh, but I think that will be after I've proven to myself that I've learnt from this experience and uh, I can positively move forward. So, um, in the coming months, over this winter period, I'll be probably doing some training vlogs um, and looking at some shorter distances next year, just to see if uh, what I'm trying to implement works. Let me know what motivates you after a setback in your running. And also, if you don't mind, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see from me next. I'm kind of thinking of some sort of training vlog once I actually get a plan together. I'll set myself a target race and I'll work towards that and I'll take you along on the journey with me. So let me know. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not going to give up running. Uh, I'm still here and let's keep going. Remember, push yourself. I'll see you in the next one.